Okay, so we're back. We're back with another recap of two races. No, I'm lying actually. It was three races in six days. We went the 1500 in Marrakesh. We then went on the Sunday. We then flew out to Marseille and raced Marseille on the Wednesday and then went straight on to Nancy in France and then did another 800. So we did three races, yeah, on the bounce and it, was, it went out quite well actually. But the 800s went better than expected. We've been training for the 15, we've been aiming for the 15 and we've kind of leveled up in the eight as well, which is, it's always good. But I think I wanted to touch on more of the differences because we've done two race recaps somewhat of the 15, but the eight is so different as an event. I kind of see the eight as like, almost like Russian roulette. You never know what you're gonna get because there's so many variables. Whereas in the 15, you can kind of guarantee who's gonna who's gonna win because it's normally based on who's the strongest. Whereas the eight, tactics come into play massively. So now, uh, if we're coming on to this race here, I think overall tactics play a bigger role, way, way more in the 800. But also the 15's kind of earned, you have to earn your stripes over a period of time. You've got to be drilling home the training. You've got to be hitting the miles. You've got to be doing so much more as an eight. You can almost be a young springy tendon runner that's got super raw speed and you can compete the best in the world. I mean, it happens all the time. We've had so many British, British guys that can just step up out of nowhere, be competitive in the 800. And they, I mean, they don't stand a hope in house chance of doing it in the 15 because it's like years of grind to get there. But that's enough of that. Let's have a look at the Marseille race for now. So I was nervous. I was nervous for this because, mainly because there were some really big names in this race, i.e. Muller, who we're seeing now. Muller's finish is like an absolute steam train. He's yeah, notorious for it. He's pretty special at finishing quick. See Raskis there in the background um, as the pacer. Man, he's like, he's, he's, pretty damn good at pacing. You've got Aldenez, who's very, very scrappy, actually, very scrappy to race. Clezio, um, new to the scene, um, normally finishes quite strong. A another good athlete. Don't really know him tactically well, don't really know how he's gonna run. Aldenez was my fear in this race. Mezian's another good runner, very strong, very consistent. He's kind of someone you don't mind being ahead of or tracking because he's quite a clean runner. Galia Mumph and Clark, um, Ryan Clark, you want to avoid these guys. They're big dudes. If you end up in an arm tussle with them, you're going to be potentially ending up worse off. So I think these are two guys I tend to try and avoid if I'm racing. So I either want to be ahead or behind. I don't want to be side by side, side by side with them. And then of course, then we've got myself coming up now. I was nervous for this race. I was properly shaky actually, if I'm being honest. I had like getting pins and needles in my hands. Um, I mean, yeah, Hannah just picked up and when I said I didn't run for the line, I definitely didn't run for the line in the last race and it really wound me up. Gaunard, very solid athlete, very, very solid athlete. It's always going to be there or thereabouts. Um, Lemieux, again, another good athlete. So Gaunard, Muller, um, with a, and Mezian were the three guys I was really watching in this race. Now we can see Nader. I think we should pay close attention to him because I think he it surprised me in this race big time. Um, he ran way better than I was expecting, way, way better. He's a 15 runner, a specialist. You've got Young and Selmy here. He's another good runner, um, very young, new to the game. Don't really know his tactics that well. And then we've got Barantini again, who's very up and down. Sometimes his performances are absolutely incredible. Sometimes they're, he's playing catch up because he's picked up injuries. So I know Sumano had a few injuries here. So I knew that he wasn't going to be ready to be going in the 144s just yet. So I kind of knew how I was going to run this race. And in my head, this race was won in the first 200. I personally think this race is won in the first 200 because of who's in it and we're off. Yeah, so my theory was here, I needed to get out the first 50 meters super hard. And if I didn't do that, then I just, I wasn't gonna be, con I wasn't gonna be able to compete. Yeah, so I got out in a decent, decent position here. Yeah, Muller and Mezian are clearly used to running at higher diamonds because they get out like bats out of hell. At this point, I didn't really want Saul ahead of me. He's very scrappy, very, very scrappy. He's never consistent with the way he runs. He's either super running in and out, he cuts up. Lovely guy, by the way, just very scrappy the way he races. I knew Mezian was ahead of me, so I actually didn't panic here because I knew it was Mezian. I thought, right, he knows how to control a race and how to run a race. I was happy to sit behind him. I didn't think I need to make him new moves. Muller was ahead. I didn't really want him this much further ahead of me at the bell, if I'm being honest, but again, I wasn't about to make any moves here, so I just knew I had to relax. At this point, you're just chilling. You're just trying to conserve energy. You're not trying to do anything, but you'll see at the back straight now, everybody usually panics. I didn't know this would happen, but Sal also had to fade and I just followed Mezian around. I wanted to get around him before we got to the bend. That was my main aim here. That was my main aim. And here I was about to go around Mezian and then he makes a move and I cut back in again. You'll see ever so slightly, I let Mezian go. Mezian makes a quite a big move. And then I thought, right, just be patient here. Be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient, be patient. As soon as you got on the straight, I went, Bang, there we go. Yeah, and then I was able to pull away. But at this race, I was super comfortable the whole way through. At no point did I actually, yeah, at no point was I pushing, in truth. It was a really chilled race, a really, really chilled race. It's actually a really good race looking at it. And I actually felt like I could have carried on running, but you tend to feel like that when you run well. It's just, 
just the way it is. Um, but yeah, no, just, yeah, looking at, that was a good run. I felt incredible on that. Way better than I felt it was going to feel, actually. I felt like it was a sliding door moment. I felt like there was so much more there to give. And it made me kind of think I want to be in a Diamond League um, 800 where it rolls a bit quicker. But again, I have to stress this race here was one in the first 200. If we go back again, let's look where who were the top four in that race and who were the top three in the finish line. It was myself, Mezian and Saul, but he faded a little bit and then Muller. If you're not, if you're at this level and you're not in the top four, if you go back through the, the archives, unless it's a slow race and it's like a 144 high or 145, everyone finishes at the same speed. So unless it's like the slower races and the only person that actually finishes quicker was probably Adam Kishot. Besides that, routine everyone finished at the same speed period i don't want i don't care about it be saying they can kick when you get to the top level everyone can kick just don't think you can kick because every time dick and harry can kick the difference is can you kick when you're in a 142 race which is what the likes of people like hydro amos were able to do not even really producer kicked by the way he just maintained he squeezed the whole way through amos and tuka were the only two people really that could kick at a 142 race other than that career used to burn it from 200 out he wasn't he wasn't a major kicker but he could kick but amos and tuka last 200 were were the anomalies there um and then let's come on to the second race so our second race is this is about a minute in by the looks of it it's a minute in so this one we missed the start of the race so we're going to go straight into the 400 to go at this point i was a little bit a little bit big big for my boots so atui was here and i felt great i felt really good but i did race two days ago and I made a move around a two and I should have just chilled. I don't know why, I just got greedy and I made a move at 250, but I actually squeezed and kicked harder than I needed to. If I just stayed relaxed, I actually would have got around him the same pace and I would have been more relaxed. And I just went 50 meters too early because I'm just out of shot here and you'll see I'm just tightening up. I'm tightening up, I'm striking out front and my feet are underneath me. And if you see the other race before, I'm feeling good, I'm just not in the right position. And then here I've tightened up. I, I haven't been able to deploy anything because I'm just in the wrong place. I noticed Gabriel was on the side of me here. I, if I'm honest, I pushed through the line. There's nothing I could have done about that. I was just greedy. I didn't go for the win. I got to 600 and I actually thought, if I'm being completely honest, I actually thought I'm gonna run 143 here. So as we were, as I came around the two, e, I saw the clock and I saw like it was 116 high, 117 low. And I was like, shit, I feel, I feel great. And that's the worst thing you can do because then like I kind of switched off for a second and I felt so good. I started to like fight it and rather than just relax and keep my shoulders down, driving my hips forward and just keep my, my feet underneath me, hips under, feet underneath my hips. I started to reach and I started to try and get something out there that wasn't quite there. And I just overcooked it a little bit. And I guess that's what happens. But I just think that when you run the difference between the eight and the 15 compared to the others is the 15 is clear cut. You don't really have to think about your tactics. You just need to stay in contact. Whereas the eight, the difference is huge because you've got to think about like the competitors. So whoever's in your race will directly make a difference to how you run that race. So I knew that Muller and Mezian was in that race and they're all pretty top guys. If you put like a Marco Arup in that race, he would have brought that through both races. He would have brought both of them through the first six about a second to a second and a half quicker than what we did there. We went through like 117s. Marco's gonna bring it 116, so you got a second there, which makes a big difference. We're talking meters here, like a good distance daylight. And if you wanna be in contact, he can sort of, he slows, but he maintains, if that makes any sense. And he'll close in like normally a 20, 27 low, 26 high. Um, and he normally comes back at about 143. But you've just got to be mindful that that can directly impacts the way you run the first of your race. Because if you think you're too far behind, you might stretch too early and you're not gonna be as relaxed. So the tactics in the eight are far more volatile. There's so many variables. And then you get freaks like Wanyani, who's just come out here and he's a, he's a freak, like if we're talking freaks. So you have to know who's in your race to determine how you're gonna run it. It's like in the UK right now, you can bet your bottom dollar if Max Bergen's in the race, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a pacemaker effectively for 700 meters. I personally haven't raced Max, I don't think. I think I must have raced him once or twice. So I haven't had the pleasure of being in a race when I'm fit with him, but he's like the perfect person. You you want Max in a race in truth because he's not inherently a kicker. Um, and if he winds it, we can go with it. But what he can do is, and what his superpower is, is he can make it hard from the start, take you to the deep waters and he knows how to survive in those deep waters better than anybody else in the UK has. Because the difference is he can front run 143, probably low, maybe even 142 as he gets older, but that's a skill in itself, but he doesn't have a kick, if that makes any sense. And this is what I'm saying about the 800 is you have different guys, you have 400, 800 guys, and then you have 815, and they're completely different demons. The four, eight guys can probably run 20 mile a week, do a few sessions, and they're just like genetically, genetically just monsters. Um, and then you have the other side of the guys who are actually working for it. They're doing the 60 to 100 mile a week, and they're 
they're actually doing grinding they come to it from a strength perspective so the quicker guys will probably want to go in like a 49 first lap the slower guys that are more strength based are probably going to want a 50 51 you both get to it in the same way it's just different ways of skinning a cat and that's where tactics come into play because in the 800 in my because i'm more 815 for me my race is run in the first 200 in my opinion I always try and get myself in a good position in the first 200. I can always command my position from there. And then when I get the back straight, when the panic happens, I either just hold my position or I go with the flow. If we have to pick up, we have to pick up. But I always try and make con contact on that back straight. And um, nothing really happens from the 300 mark to the 500. You'll find nothing ever happens. It's like a 200 of grace where people just settle in. Very rare people make a move. And if you do make a move there, because I believe you only have two moves in the eight. If you do make a move there, then you probably cooked. You're probably cooked. If you're making a move 400 out, it's it's just it's stupid. You may as well have got your speed up at the start, maintained, cruised a little bit, then pick up again. But if you're like going at a moderate pace and then kicking at 400, yeah, see you later, you're not gonna make it. And also the other thing you have to factor in for both events, eight and 15, is that the difference between lane one and lane two is seven meters, which is why you should never overtake on a bend unless it's a quick overtake and you've got good momentum because seven meters is huge. And if you do seven meters over two laps and you're running wide for two laps, I mean, that's 14 meters. That's the difference between first and last place in most races. That's quite literally. So you got to factor in, your move should be made on a straight. And then you've got to factor in wind because wind always comes into it as well. And who's in front of you, because if you know like a Sal Orden is, if he's fit, he's gonna fight you to not let you get that position and he's gonna throw you off. Whereas like a Tui, let me go around him in that last race. Oh man, there's so many variables. There's a lot that goes in and that's why I say the eight is Russian roulette and the 15 is purely about who is the better athlete. I need a round, I'm gonna do a round table talk on this about the eight and we'll sit down with a few guys and you'll see that there's far more to it than I think anybody ever imagined. It's quite a complex one. It's not an easy one to grasp. Thank you